All right, uh, Jenny LeMay, can you please, uh, it's Jeannie, right? Oh, yeah, it's, it's not Jenny, it's Jeannie. Jeannie okay, Jeannie LeMay. Okay, Jeannie LeMay. That's okay. Could That's you tell me uh, where you were born and where you grew up? Um, I was born in Providence, and I did grow up here in Rhode Island. Um, lived here most of my life until until I actually moved to um, to Memphis mm -hmm. in, in, in the 70s. So basically, I, I was here my whole life. What did your parents do? Um, my, my mother was a, a housewife, and my, my dad worked for a naval base. And like everybody else did, he was in the the Navy, and um, you know. But my mom, uh, she worked very, very little, uh, in, but mostly with a housewife. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when did you get into doing the uh, the pageants? Uh, the pageant um, was done uh, in '72, and um, you know when I won, I actually was in it uh, uh, two years before that, and I don't think I was really ready for the pageant. I just did it to do something exciting. But you know, I got third runner-up in Miss Photogenic, and then two years later, um, you know, I was talking to one of my friends who was in it, and she said, "Oh, you know, I'm going to be in it again, and why don't you do it because uh, we could have a good time." And so I said, "Okay," and. And so I won and got Miss Congeniality, and, um, and then, of course, um, you know, everything took off because uh, in the Miss USA pageant, uh, I was teamed with Linda Thompson, <laughs> and the rest, <laughs> the rest is history. The rest is history, yeah. Best uh, experience of my life because she was, we became um, instant friends and, and like sisters, and, and I have a twin sister, and I'll be honest with you, I was just as close to her as my own twin. And uh, it, it was just nice. To, it was a nice um, difference of cultures there that kind of came together, and uh, and you know I, the north and the south there. And I, I loved it. It was just it was just so much fun. Mm -hmm. She's the greatest girl. She's fantastic. And she seemed like she was very bubbly. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes. Well, we both we both got this congeniality in our state pageants, which was ironic. And um, and I thought from what I heard. Um, I almost got the Congeniality Award in uh, the USA pageant, uh, from what somebody told me. Miss Utah got it that year. And I think Linda was, was also up in the running. But somebody had told me that, and I don't really know how true it is, but that's what they told me. But, yeah, I think we both have a little bit of a bubbly personality. But, but Linda is a wit. You know, she's far wittier than I am, and I think that's, how she got along so well with Elvis because he also had this the same um, quality, mm -hmm. and uh, you know she uh, she could just come up with things. Of course, she's a she's a songwriter, and uh, she could sit down and, and write things like that. So obviously, these things come to her very naturally. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how it came about that uh, you and Linda met Elvis? Well, we were invited um, uh, by uh, Bill Browder, who became T.G. Shepard, mm -hmm. you know, a, a recording artist, and did Devil in the Bottle and all. And um, we, we went to lunch at the um, Friday's restaurant, you know, I, there were no Friday's restaurants in Rhode Island, and, you know, she asked me if I wanted to go to Lafayette's or Friday's, and I said, oh, well, Friday's looks kind of, you know, funky, uh, you know, let's go there. And uh, so everything was faded as far as I'm concerned, and... Um, even meeting Linda in that pageant. I mean, having all the states uh, that you could have been roommates with, and they put me with Tennessee. So we really think it was faded. But um, he was he was there, and uh, knew Linda, of course. She knew everybody. She won every ta talent uh, uh, in every um, pageant in Tennessee. But uh, he invited us to uh, go to the Memphis Theater that night at 12 midnight when Elvis rented out the theater. But I thought that he was just, kidding uh and he really was interested in linda as a as a woman mm -hmm. because i i really didn't know any better i i just assumed it because um uh you know my sister and i had met tom jones almost a year to the day in rhode island and i just couldn't believe i was going to be this lucky mm -hmm. to you know meet these two sex symbols uh people i always especially elvis i mean you know i wanted to meet elvis uh more than anybody and uh i just I couldn't believe I was that fortunate. And um, so when we, when we went to the theater that night, uh, at, at midnight, Bill was with another girl. And I said, wow, well, that, uh, that straightened that right out. And then um, all of a sudden we were in the lobby and Elvis came crashing through the, the doors with one of the bodyguards. And 
I thought I was seeing things. I just couldn't believe it. And he, and he was dressed, you know, kind of flamboyant, of course. He had like a kind of a cape, and he, he reminded me of, of Dracula. And I even said that to Linda, and we both kind of giggled. But, um, you know, he, and then we went uh, and, and, and sat down. Um, and, uh, oh, before we sat down, actually, Elvis had sat down first. You know, Elvis always had to sit down first, and he always sat ahead of everybody um, in the theater, about mm -hmm. ten rows ahead of everybody. And he was with a group of people. It was a bunch of girls, of course, and all. And that's when Bill introduced us. He said, this is Linda Thompson, Miss Tennessee, this is Jeannie May, Miss Rhode Island. And then Linda was just, like, kind of threw out something like, oh, my aunt told me uh, to tell you to, to say hi because... Uh, she lived at the Lauderdale Courts, and she can't blame you for getting out of there. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, she's just so beyond confident. All right. I can't, get I can't get over this. You know, she just wasn't intimidated the least little bit. And she was laughing, and, and he seemed intrigued. He, he was smitten from the get-go. Really? Yes. You, you could tell. I mean, because... Right after that, I mean, I think he was saying like, "Wow, this girl, this real, this girl really has something special." And of course, she looked gorgeous, um, just as tanned, and she had this cute little dress, and you know, the cleavage was showing. She just looked <laughs> beautiful. And so we sat down about ten rows in back, and of course, we we're at the end of the aisle, uh, and there was one seat that was vacant, and it was Linda and then me. But George Klein was sitting with us uh, and talking to Linda, and. Elvis kept turning around when the movie started. Kept turning around, turning around, turning around. And that's when, um, all of a sudden, Elvis came out of his, his chair and was walking toward the back of the theater, and George flew out of the chair in the middle of his conversation. I mean, didn't even finish it. So we didn't really know what was going on. Little did we realize they have their hand signals or whatever signals that they oh, had. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and so... Instead of George coming back, it was Elvis. Uh -huh. And he plopped down in the seat next to Linda. I mean, really plops. I mean, hard. And Linda didn't blink an eyelash. I almost passed out. <laughs> I, I mean, I really did. And she just said very confidently and laughing about it, oh, to what do we owe this honor? <laughs> and I must have jabbed her in the ribs so bad. I mean, she even said I probably bruised her. She had bruises to prove it. Because I just couldn't believe she was saying this to him. And he started to stutter. Like, you know, Elvis' famous stutter, you know, when he first started out. Um, he, uh, 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 well, I just thought I would sit down. And from then on, that was it. Uh -huh. That was it. They just hit it off. And he was, you know, and she, she of course, knew that, um, well, thought that he was still married. We, we both did. And... Um, uh, he said he was separated. He said it's in the, you know going to be in the papers or whatever. Mm. And um, so then Linda relaxed a little bit because he was trying to kiss her, and the arm went went around her shoulder. It, it was just brushing his hand was just brushing my shoulder, and I I swore I was never going to wash that area again. Um, but I mean, I I couldn't believe that this guy was just sitting there next to my friend and trying to kiss her, and, and she was holding back. Pardon? And she was holding back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Until until she actually found out that he was separated. Mm -hmm. She she was very stiff, very stiff, and, and she relaxed a little bit. I mean, but you know, obviously he's still technically married. Lynn is very old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was she was the sweetest, most innocent little thing you can imagine. Twenty two years old. Um, this was her first serious intimate relationship, mm -hmm. um, and um, and that intrigued him. Uh, that definitely intrigued him, you know, when he when he found out, you know, just how how pure this this little girl was, uh -huh. and um, and then she had all the other qualities, the beauty, the charm, the the wit, the 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 everything. I mean, the, Linda had it all. Linda, mm -hmm. Linda really had it all. There's a lot of people, um, myself included, that uh, think she's the best thing that ever happened to Elvis. Yeah. And, I mean, oh, yes, because um, she, I mean, she not only saved his life a couple of times, but, I mean, she took care of him like a nurse would. You know, she was, she was everything. She was like a best friend. She was, you know, a confidant. She was uh, like a mother, um, sister, lover, everything. Mm -hmm. The body gods had said this I don't know how many times, and it's true. Um, and some people even think she would, uh, he would still be alive if she had been with him, which, of course, 
you know, I, I believe that it's God's will. And, I mean, I still wish he was with us, but I think he's up there in heaven, and he's totally delighted at all this admiration he's getting. I, I really do. I think he's just up there laughing his head off. Um, but uh, she, um, she just... Uh, was the best thing, I think, for him. And, uh, you know, it's a shame they had to break up, but, you know, Elvis had his, his faults and his, uh, his uh, problems with, with the pills, which we all know about. And I think that uh, it got to be too much with the ladies, and mm-hmm. she just had to leave. She just, she just did, and um, for whatever reason, uh, God wanted him, and um, I just think, like I said, we... You know, we're, we should be lucky that we did have him for as long as we did, and we should naturally not worship him like I, you know, I've said before, because I know that some fans did. Um, and he, he wasn't a god to be worshipped, but he should be admired and 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 respected and loved and appreciated for, you know, his talent and his and his his god. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, given beauty, oh, he was the most gorgeous man, and in, in person, even more beautiful. If that is is you know even feasible. Mm-hmm. Um, even men but, say that um, that he was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it, you couldn't even imagine, you know, like I couldn't look at him without turning away because he was that because of the aura around him mm-hmm. to, to besides the looks. Um, but he was just absolutely, I call it, he had this chewable mouth because, <laughs> you know, I did get a kiss, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you. We, um, but that's, that's all, and that's all I would, I, I would want because there was no way that I would ever have made a pass at him or he would have made a pass at me because he had too much respect. He knew that I, my devotion to Linda as a friend mm-hmm. uh, was far beyond that, and I know all the other women. Uh, including some people that pretended to be a friend, made passes at him, mm-hmm. and um, and that wasn't right. Um, and uh, but he did. When we were taking pictures, when we did, you know, get invited to Graceland mm-hmm. after the the first meeting, uh, we were taking pictures, and of course he was kissing Linda in, in front of the the the, uh, the doorway there, and uh, and I'm thinking, oh my God, these pictures are going to be unbelievable. And they never came out, mind you. I don't know what happened. I don't know if, if Red exposed the film. I don't know. I, I thought maybe that that could have happened. I don't mm-hmm. want to blame Red. But it's just odd that they were overexposed yeah. when I got the film. Um, and then when I posed with him to take a picture, Red was taking it, and he just grabbed me and kissed me. And I know it wasn't because he was being disrespectful toward Linda because he was with her all night. Mm-hmm. Um, he was kidding around. So how was it he kissing was, Elvis Presley? He, he liked to shock you. Uh-huh. you. You know, everybody knows he loved, he loved to shock you. He loved to put you... That's why he would sometimes come out with this language that you would not even believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he was so cute. But he would do it to shock you. Mm-hmm. And so, believe me, I almost passed out. Because <laughs> he was, first of all, the best kisser, but he was with my friend, so I had to <laughs> pretend that, you know, I wasn't about to just drop, you know, on the ground <laughs> and, and calm down. So your knees uh, got a little wobbly, huh? Oh, did they ever, did they ever. And then, of course, he kissed us goodbye when we were in the car, but he kept kissing her and kissing her and kissing uh-huh. her, not wanting to let her go. And um, and then he gave me a kiss, too. So I yeah. had my second kiss, but, you know, a, a little one. But really, when we were going home that night, I was screaming down the driveway, oh, uh-huh. my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, because he was with her um, uh, upstairs for hours. Yeah. And I thought he had taken advantage of her. Um, and I kept, you know, calling up there saying, Elvis, we got to go because her family was expecting us to go on vacation to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, Mm -hmm. and we had to leave at 5. So um, when, you know, she came back down, I'm like, she didn't look flustered to me, so (laughs) I said, maybe she's intact because I just couldn't leave Elvis Presley. (laughs) You were worried about her. Yeah. I mean, um, this so beautiful I, blonde uh, beauty upstairs in Elvis's know, bedroom with uh, the king of rock and roll. And nothing's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I knew Linda was pretty old-fashioned, and I, and I knew she was, you know, uh, very pure. And I really didn't believe that he was going to, she was going to submit to this at all. But, you know, and I didn't think he was, you know, yeah. capable of, of raping her, my goodness. But I just 
thought that, you know, oh, my God, there is a possibility here. And so when I asked her, he, she said, you're not going to believe this. He read to me from the Bible wow. and all these religious books, and we talked, and we just cuddled, and he's just wonderful and, and considerate and kind. And I went, oh, my mm. God, he's perfect. He's just this perfect man. So um, that was the, the infamous meeting. Mm. But um, what, what'd you think of, What did you think of Graceland when you first saw it? Well, I didn't think it was very uh, flamboyant at the time. Now, this was before um, he actually renovated it in the, the red era. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was still it was still kind of conservative to me. Um, you know, it was bigger than than a lot of houses that I had been in. I mean, it was still a mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I hadn't been upstairs in the bedroom yet, um, but you know, when I had that opportunity, of course. Um, you know, I can tell you, you know, how um, I ended up working there. I, I ended up moving back uh, to to Memphis uh, in 74. And then um, I was actually working as a, in a restaurant as a hostess supervisor. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I got a call from Linda one day, and she just said, you know, Elvis wants to know if you, if you want a job. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, Becky Yancey quit. Uh, after like 20 years or something like that, you know, she, uh, I think, wanted, you know, more money. And Mr. Preston was very frugal. You know, we all know that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, she, you know, he asked Linda to call me. And so that was an offer I couldn't really refuse. I, I didn't, I loved my job. I really mm -hmm. did. But and what was your job? Uh, I was the hostess supervisor at this restaurant at the time. Yeah, but when you started to work for Elvis. At Graceland. Oh, uh, fan mail secretary. So what happened was Becky had done all the executive work. And so um, Elvis's cousin, Patsy Gamble, sure. Presley, Presley uh, took over that position. And then I did her position. So I handled the fan mail with uh, Paulette uh, Lewis Schaefer. And, uh, mm -hmm. and it's Williams now. So, boy, do I have a question for you. Okay. Since you worked and did the fan mail, did... Uh, did the secretary, it's, all, it's long been said that the secretary signed Elvis's name. I, everybody asked that. I personally didn't sign anything. Now, all I know, all I witnessed, actually, is um, Patsy had to sign certain legal stuff. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they certainly weren't, weren't going to uh, uh, wake up Elvis in the middle of the day. For every little thing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know she had to do that, but I never really witnessed her signing any of the other stuff okay, okay? um so i certainly didn't do it mm -hmm. uh but uh you know that that's all i really know um but you know it's a shame it's a shame that everybody thinks they really didn't get a legitimate um, right you know well, was it very common for elvis to send out autographed letters to people but, uh, no i don't think he did a lot of it i but i know that there were some things yeah that they they did send to the house mm -hmm. But see, I I don't know all the details about that because you know I wasn't I didn't witness it. Yeah. But I know that they did have to bring uh, certain things in for him to sign. Right. But uh, but I know Patsy signed you know probably things a little less important. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure he signed some some of the the autographs. But they, I don't think it was. It was well, they almost make it sound like they, it was masked signatures that you like the secretaries were in there signing all these letters and sending them out to fans but it wasn't like that no 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 no, no not at all not now how was vernon all. presley how was vernon well vernon was tough he, i found he was wonderful wonderful uh, in the beginning there mm -hmm. um when elvis's health declined and, and he was um in the hospital there in 75 like i think four or five times for goodness sake the fan mail was outrageous i mean we had boxes there was only two of us doing this mind you mm -hmm. so boxes and boxes i mean they actually reached my desk in the in the picture in my book um you can actually see the box and it's it's uh, it reaches the table where um my typewriter was mm -hmm. that's all that's all the how high the boxes were um I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, How was Vernon? <laughs> oh, Vernon. I totally lost it. Uh, Vernon, like I said, the beginning was, was wonderful. And I think he started to get nervous. Of course, then there was problems, I think, with the colonel and uh, with a lot of things. And, um, of course, we didn't know back then about the, the drugs and everything. Right. Well, I, I, I vaguely knew from Linda. She said there were problems and mm -hmm. all this, but I, I didn't know. 
he was in the hospital for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody really said, and I never asked because I'm not that newsy. Um, but Vernon, um, toward the end, I mean, I ended up quitting because he was he was so bad. Um, you could tell he was just totally stressed out. But I, you know, I was stressed out too. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he, you know, I just said, you know, Miss Presley, you, you just can't talk to us like that. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he was he was he was tough. He was harsh. And, and Linda told Elvis that when he, he, she told Elvis that I had quit. He says, well, Jesus, you know, she can't do that, no, you know, because you just don't quit working for Elvis yeah. that easily. So um, he thinks that, you know, it's, it's kind of um, an insult. Right. And uh, he, he gets hurt. He gets did he hurt. ask for you to come back? Well, he, what he did was, he, Linda explained to him the, the situation. She just said, you know, Jeannie, uh, you know how harsh your father can be. And, um, you know, it's tough. And what, you know, I decided to do was I was going to be traveling with Linda. You know, I was going to be doing that. So, so, so basically I did a little traveling and I, I was going to think, I was thinking of moving to California mm -hmm. and all that. So I didn't want to go back as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but everything was fine. And then, um. Are you, you know, still I, okay with Vernon even after you quit? I mean. Every oh yeah. Oh no. As a matter of fact, when, um, my sister got married on June 26th and just so happened that Elvis was going to be in Rhode Island that day. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, uh, Linda said, well, why don't you hit your ride on the Lisa Marie? Because, you know, we're going there anyway. So I did. And I saw Mr. Presley and, and he was fine. And everything was, was fine. fine. That's cool right. that they could do that. Yeah. Cause well, very few people tell uh, burning off, <laughs> and and I guess I was one of them, because you know he had to be told, right. because you just you know I told him I I said basically you know just because your Elvis's dad doesn't mean you can talk to us like this, mm -hmm. you know and and I don't think the other two girls you could have heard a pin drop. I mean Patsy Patsy, uh, you know her mouth just dropped right open. I don't <laughs> believe it either, but um, you know it had to be done. It had yeah. To be done. Well, he probably respected you more. I think so. For standing up. So. Yeah. Because I wasn't a little wimp. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And maybe maybe it's for being uh, from this area. I don't know. But um, I, all I know is it had to be done. Yeah. And, um, and I, was, I was proud of myself. I now, i got to ask you something. you got to tell me about Elvis's bedroom. Okay. Well, basically, how, how that all happened was um, I got to stay with Linda when Elvis went out of town. Mm -hmm. now, people got to realize that I did not stay there when he was there, except for Christmas in 73. He was there, and I stayed in the annex area and, um, you know, got to play with Lisa Marie, and you know, I'll, I'll tell you that story, too, you know, and um, uh, that was the most exciting time of my whole entire life. I mean, how many people get to spend Christmas at Graceland? Mm -hmm. But um, when I first went in the bedroom, first of all, I thought it was very small. I mean, but remember, there was a 9 by 9 bed in there mm -hmm. that, that takes up the whole room. But I mean, for, you know, Elvis Presley's bedroom, I expected this humongous room. And, um, and the bathroom, I thought, was a, was a good size. And I, I thought that the bathroom was gorgeous, and that's why I took a picture of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, for my family's benefit, I thought, oh, my family would love to see this not believing in a million years that, that uh, you know, he would ever leave us there. Um, but uh, I took pictures of that whole upstairs, and I think I'm the only person that did. Yeah, and, and you had Linda's you had Linda's permission to do so. P permission to do so, absolutely. And and Elvis knew about it. Elvis knew about it. And I mean, everybody knows, like I said, that these you know the upstairs is off limits unless you're living under a rock. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the Elvis world knows this. Unless you know you're not a fan, you wouldn't know this. But um, you know, I took these pictures because, uh, you know, I, I was so intrigued to have the opportunity to be up there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the first shots that I got was when uh, Elvis was getting divorced and he went to L.A. And Linda called me and said, you want to come down? So that's how I ended up taking the pictures of the, bath the bedrooms, the bathrooms, and everything else. And we had sleepovers. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of the night... Um, Linda took a picture of me as a joke with my camera, grabbed my camera, and took a picture of me sleeping in the bed with Linda's, Linda's cousin, Lori, was in the middle of us. So mm -hmm. it was me, Linda, and Lori, and then Janet was on the floor. So we were, uh, how was the bed? Was it rock hard? Was it soft? It was soft. I don't think it was, it was rock hard. Um, I, back then, I don't think they had pillow tops. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, but they, they were, you know, there were uh, two TVs in the ceiling, which mm -hmm. I found a blast. 
Um, not that we've watched it a whole lot. We, you know, we've watched the other one, but um, you know, it, it was definitely a comfortable bed. And there was a, there was an eye level TV too, wasn't there? There was two in the ceiling. Plus, there was one if you if you were sitting, you could see one too. No, no. If you were sitting, there was one right in front of a great big RCA. In matter of fact, probably one of the ones that he shot. Uh-huh. You know, if, if he didn't like somebody on the TV, we all know that he shot the TVs out. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, you know, because the room was so small, yeah, it, it really wasn't that far away from the bed, mm-hmm. you know, and it was huge. Uh, and, and, of course, downstairs they had, they had one of those big screen TVs, uh, you know, that's similar to what we have now, but it, it, was, it was like a, a, a projection screen. Right, I think. right, yeah, in the, the jungle TV room. Up, uh, upstairs was like a big RCA Victor type mm-hmm. thing. So we, we mostly watched TV on that, you know. But um, it, was, it was very comfortable, and, you know, if, if you know... Was it cold? Uh, it was always cold, yeah. It was always cold because he, he liked it cold. And it, 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 it was always dark, dark, because he couldn't sleep any other way. I mean, we mm-hmm. all know that when he stayed at the uh, Baptist Hospital, he had to have them put tin foil, aluminum foil, uh, in the windows mm-hmm. uh, because he couldn't stand the light. And because he, he had sensitive eyes, mm-hmm. and so that's why. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, the upstairs, like I said, is, is just, it was so in, it's so intriguing to everyone. I mean, every, everyone is just fascinated by these, by these pictures. Right. And, um, and the fans went crazy when I had a website uh, back in 2002, which I took down because I started to do the book because I got all this um, support and uh, encouragement. They said, you know, you've got to have these pictures available to the fans because they really want to see this. Very much. And I'm sure some people, some people are sensitive, Joe. Yeah, I was going to um, ask you that, if you had any problems with it. Yeah, some people are sensitive, but some people, you know, like I said, they think, okay, now it's just another bedroom. Well, remember, this is a human being. Right. Granted, and it, it's an extraordinary human being. It's the entertainer of the century. Um, but he still was a human being, and Elvis did know about it, and nobody's got any right to say that Elvis wouldn't, wouldn't want this or like this. I mean, you know, how do they know? First of all, Elvis's sense of humor was hysterical. Mm-hmm. And it's not like there's anything dirty going on. That everything was as innocent as, as could be. I mean, I've got rollers in my hair, for goodness sake, sleeping in the bed <laughs> during a sleepover with her cousins. I mean, my God. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fans, I just, some of them are obsessed with these pictures. You know, yeah. people, like I said. They get angry? I mean, some actually get angry? Do some of them, some of them get angry? Yeah, I, I've had some emails uh, from, from people that, that are, but I know some people that have written books, uh, you know, uh, that don't know Elvis very well or even that maybe did uh, know him, you know, pretty well, but not maybe as well as I did or someone else. They get knocked because they see him. They were all just trying to make money. Right. I hate to say this, but the main reason I did this is for the fans. I mean, obviously, everybody probably makes money on a book. But what I'm saying is, is this book that I put together, this, this collector's edition, there's this, this two books that actually uh, Rooftop Publishing put together for me. They have a black and white paperback 6x9 edition with 30 pictures, but they did an 8.5x11 hardcover collector's edition. Oh, that sounds it's nice. It's just that. It's, there's 70 color pictures in here, and like mm-hmm. I said, all of the pictures are the upstairs. And the fans have gone nuts over this. I've gotten more positive response than negative, Joe. Mm-hmm. So the fact of the matter is, you know, you never, never, I mean, look at, look at the, the criticism that Elvis got. You know, uh, when he first came out, I mean, there was a lot of people against his style, his hair, his clothing, everything. I mean, you can't let all of that bother you, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and I don't have a website up anymore. People, you know, uh, people are funny. Uh, they've got to realize that, uh, you know, once you do anything like that, um, it's always available if you go into a search. But it's, oh, yeah. not, up and, it, it's not up and running per se. I, I don't have any pictures available, you know, so, I mean, that's why I did the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's available, uh, obviously, through rooftoppublishing.com. It's, it's available at Barnes and & Nobles and other locations. Mm-hmm. Of course, Amazon, too, Amazon.com. But, 
you know, I I basically think that the majority of the fans are very, very uh, pleased and happy, happy about that. Are there more pictures in the second book than in the... Now, I have a colored version here, paperback. Now, in the collectors, is there more photos in there? Yes. Yes, it, you have the initial one that was done. Uh, I did. I actually self-published that one. It had 30 pictures. It was paperback, but it was eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that you have? Yeah. Um, yes. And so uh, the, this this new one is a hardcover, and it's got 70 colored pictures. Wow. It's beautiful how they they put it together almost like a scrapbook. It's got little like black tabs like uh, on the, the pictures, so it looks like a scrapbook. It's beautiful. They did a beautiful job. Wow. Um, and so, uh, you know, I really think that the fans uh, are going to be very, very happy with it. Oh, I'm sure they are. Um, it's, it's like, well, the story, it, it's the same story. And um, my, a friend of mine said it reads like a fairy tale. Because, I mean, it, you know, it was just a girl from Rhode Island that gave mm -hmm. this incredible experience. So, to me, it's a fairy tale come true. Yeah, if, I, if I didn't know you, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know how many people all these years that I have to whip out my pictures to prove it because people will say, oh, she worked for Elvis, and they'll go, yeah, right. Yeah. And so I've been wearing my ring a lot lately because a lot of times I don't wear it. Oh, you gotta tell you gotta tell the listeners how you got your ring. Oh yeah, it's a good it's a good story. But um, before I even mention that, I want to mention Jim Cox because Jim Cox is my co-writer, and he. It was an Elvis fan, is an Elvis fan, uh -huh. and he was co-writing um, Nancy Rook's The Maid's book, um, yep. Inside Graceland. And so he contacted me and wanted to know if I wanted to get involved in their book, and so I told him that I was going to write my own. And then, you know, when I asked him if he wanted to co-write my book, he said as soon as he got through with Nancy's, he'd be more than happy. And um, he did such a wonderful job putting this together, capturing my personality. I can't even tell yeah. you because we talked on the phone, and, you know, and we also, um, you know, we, we emailed each other, and uh, I said to him. You become he, friends. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's the best. He's I've interviewed friends. both, Nancy Rooks and uh, Jim Cox. Yes, yeah. yes, he told me that. He told me that. So that's why, uh, you know, I was more than happy to, to do this with you. Mm -hmm. so honestly, this is this is a great experience. But let me tell you the uh, the ring story. Okay. It's, it's uh, um, it, it basically um, happened on on tour on August the 29th in Atlanta, and uh, Linda called me from my room, and she said, um, "Come on down to the suite." So I, I go inside the the living room section, and Linda comes out and says, come on in here for a minute. So I go into the bedroom area, and um, Elvis kind of walked up to the door to greet me, and he had on a blue robe, and, um, and then I saw his jeweler, Lowell Hayes, with a, with a big case, uh, sitting on a chair, and uh, Linda was, was sitting on the bed, and George Pizzito was sitting in the other chair. And so Elvis just hands me this little white box with my name on it, and it's, she, he says, honey, uh, I want you to have this. And I said, for what? I said, I didn't do anything. <laughs> and he said, no, I, you know, I want you to have this for being a good friend to Linda. And he said, come on over here and sit down and, and open up the box. So I, I went over and sat down, and I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I mean, I knew it was a ring box because, you know, I know my jewelry. <laughs> so I opened it up, and there was this green velvet box. And uh, I, I, I knew that was definitely a ring box. And then I opened it and saw this three and a half carat cross. Well, I didn't know it was shaped like a cross at the time, but this, you know, uh, clustered diamond ring. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just couldn't believe how big it was. And I just like looked at it, closed the box, and started falling mm -hmm. my head off. You know, and he had the most adorable crooked grin. You, the joy on his face when you know he saw my face. I, I can't even tell you. So he said, he said, you know, calm down. He says, I want to put it on your finger. Okay. He says, oh, he says, and you, oh, he says first he said, um, you know, uh, you know, it's a shape like a cross. And I said, oh my God, it is, isn't it? And so he went to put it on my finger. And it got stuck because it wasn't sized for me. Mm -hmm. So I went, wait a minute, and I just took a little saliva from my mouth and wet my finger, and it slid, it slid right on. And I just looked at it and looked at him and looked at it and looked at him and, and just grabbed him around the neck and, and, and kissed him and thanked him. And, and like I said, you had to see the joy on his face 
Mm-hmm. So I got that ring. I can't even. I wow. can't even begin to describe. So we all felt like we were engaged to Elvis because he gave away about 15 rings that day. Really? And except mine was the prettiest. I have to say, except for Linda's. Linda got about four rings. I mean, astronomical jewels. I can't even begin to describe. But mine. You know, years later, he said to me at Grace when we were around the the dining room, and grabs my hand. He says, he said, "Honey, did I give you that ring?" And I said, "No, the tooth fairy did. <laughs> you did." You know, and he said. Well, that's the daintiest mother I ever gave to anybody. <laughs> because it is. It's, it's a very beautiful shaped ring, you know, and even though it's astro- astronomical in, in size, it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and I guess dainty in his eyes. But, of course, anything's dainty to Elvis because he was so flamboyant. Yeah. And he loved everything bigger than life. Yeah. Did you get a TLC, too? No, I didn't get a TLC. Um, he went crazy with those TLCs of prior to me working there. And, and believe me, this ring was far greater than any TLC I could have wanted because, first of all, diamonds, oh, my God. And, and, and the fact that it's shaped like a cross and mm-hmm. you put it on my finger. Oh, I bet you it's very car. beautiful. Yeah, and I got a car. You want to hear the car story? Yeah, go ahead. Actually, yeah, go ahead. I love the car story. Oh, the car story is, is adorable because it, it really shows how humble this this, this man was. Um, he, this is when he was going crazy buying all the Pontiacs at the time at the dealership. And so um, I, I was I was there at Grace, and he says, come on, honey, we're all going for a ride. Okay? So it was um, Linda and him in the front seat. I was in the back seat with... Um, uh, one of the bodyguards, and I can't remember who. Uh, and he says to me, he's driving, and he said, um, Honey, I'm going to buy you this car. And he said, It's a little bit different, but you're going to have to drive it. And I looked at Linda, and I'm like, What the heck is he talking about? And I went, What? And you know what? I'm like, No way. I, you know, and I said, well, what, what are you talking about? So we get to the dealership. He said, No, he says, You know, where do we get there? Where do we get there? So we get to the dealership, and, you know, he had this beautiful, like, shimmy leather outfit on with all the lionstones all over it, and he was in the most excitable mood you could ever imagine. He was high. He was definitely high. Mm-hmm. He wasn't half asleep that day. So he said, um, he said, uh, hey, you over there or something, he said, uh, can you bring that car over there for this young lady I'm buying it for? And I, my mouth dropped because it, had, it was yellow with a leopard top. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? And he said, well, I know you like leopard and all that. So Linda's laughing because, you know, she must have told him, you know, and all this. And so, um, but it was a stick shift, okay? And I didn't know how to drive, you know, the, a stick shift. And so he said, oh, it's easy. He said, you know, I'll show you. So he gets in the car, and Linda's in the middle, and I'm at the end. And he's saying, now, see, I can drive it. And this, that, of course, I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh-huh. And so he he said, and honey, he said, notice it." It sounds like a jet plane. He said, listen to that engine. So all these people that are in the other cars are looking at this car. First of all, it's very noticeable, yellow with a leopard top. <laughs> Second of all, you've got Elvis Presley driving it. Okay? <laughs> so everybody is staring. And he says to me, and he said, honey, he said, look at everybody looking at your new car. Isn't this something? <laughs> and I looked at him and said, Elvis. Did you ever stop and think they could be looking at you? <laughs> and, he went, and he just went very humbly, went, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> it was just absolutely adorable. And and I said, I just love this guy for that. Yeah. You know, because he, he, one minute he could be like, you know, gee, I'm... I'm the most handsome man in the world, and, you know, it's, it's a joke, you'd say, um, if there was a beauty contest for men, I'd win it, and yeah. stuff like that, and then, and then he'd say something like that. Yeah. He was, he was adorable. Yeah. Did he have a temper? He really was. Did he have a temper at times? Oh, yes, everyone knows the famous temper, and, and I'll tell you the little story, I, I witnessed him shooting the Pantera, and... Oh, uh, you oh, know, did it, you? Yes, I did. It, it didn't start. And he got mad and, uh, you know, stood up. He got out of the car and took out his gun and shot it. And I thought I was going to run for the hills. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Um, and so um, that was quite an experience. And, of course, I guess they fixed it. And mm-hmm. um, I, I think he did it again. I mean. <laughs> and to this day, it still has a uh, hole in the steering wheel from the bullet. Oh, I, I bet it does. It does. I yeah, I've got pictures of it on my on my site, uh, elvis 2001net Do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's funny when you said about the Pantera. Yeah. 
I was definitely there. Absolutely. Can you, can you tell me about Christmas? Like I said, I'm sorry. You know, when, he, when he did things like that, he would, you know, it, it would scare you because you you didn't know what you were dealing with. And, of course, I was there uh, when he, you know, had a little bit of, a, of another uh, tant tantrum, if you want to call it that. But he was mad at the bodyguards because, you know, there was a little bit of a, of a, of a kind of a match with him and one of the uh, fans in Vegas. Uh, because he threw a scarf, and she threw it back, and then he threw it back, and they went back and forth, and the bodyguards didn't break it up, and I think he was mad at them for that. She didn't want uh, the scarf? She didn't want it. She, she, she was either playing games, Joe, uh -huh. or, or just trying to get attention. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really know, like, what happened, but all I know is that Bob Hope was in the suite that night. And nothing was said about that. I got to meet Bob, um, and oh, I was—he was—he he was the greatest as mm -hmm. Steve Barris. He was my favorite comedian, and I, I wanted to say thanks for the memories or something. And I, I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. And there <laughs> I was, and Elvis Presley sweet, and I'm intrigued by Bob Hope. But um, anyway, it's because you know he was like 70 years old, and and I just respected the man. He was a wonderful man. So after he left, I was um, in the in Linda's bathroom, and Linda was showing me the hole that where Elvis was having gun practice in the suite like a year before or something. And I said, she says, oh, she says, see the hole there above the toilet tape dispenser? And I said, yeah. And she said that Elvis, you know, was having target practice, and that's uh, where he, uh, the bullet went through. And I, if I had been standing there, I would have been killed. So it was really close. Yeah. So, you know, she tells this story quite a bit. So she knows that he tells me the story, and Elvis comes into the suite yelling at the guys and cussing them all out and firing everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I was petrified when I heard him, you know, so angry, and I said, get me the hell out of here, because I didn't know if he was going to start, you know, whipping out the gun. And, and I just wanted out. Mm -hmm. And Linda's laughing, because she knew that he wasn't going to do that. Mm -hmm. She said, she said, no, she said, she, she just thought that I was funny because I was so afraid. And she was used to this yeah. by now. And this was all over the person who didn't want the scarf? Yes, yes. But, but why would he be, I'm trying to understand, why would he be upset at the bodyguards, though? I think because he wanted them, I think, to break it up. Oh. And, and they didn't because I think he was embarrassed. I mean, oh. let's face it, here's a, here's a fan that doesn't want the scarves, and how many people would kill for one of these scarves? I mean, he, he basically, at the end, threw it back at her, and, and, and she kept it. Uh -huh. But it was, it was embarrassing, yeah. I think. I was embarrassed for him. So I think that he expected the bodyguards to break it up, but the bodyguards, why would they break it up? Because they thought maybe he was playing it. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But Elvis, Elvis had, had pride, you know, and he, he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what happened. But anyway, he, he forgave, and, for, forgave and, and forgotten the whole thing shortly after that, hired everybody back. He did that a lot, didn't he? He would fire he people and then... Uh... Yeah, fire, yeah, fire him, hire him. Yep, everybody, all, <laughs> he fired everybody, all of us. <laughs> all the time. He fired Linda, he fired, he fired all of us. Not me, not me, but um, I quit. <laughs> hey, but, can you uh, tell me about the uh, Christmas at uh, Graceland? Oh, God, yeah, I'll tell you. And, and let me ask you something. Christmas at Graceland, I know he uh, decorated the outside. Everybody knows, because they still do it. Did he decorate the inside just as much? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the big Christmas tree and, uh, oh, very, very ornate, yeah. Um, but I believe he, he had the same uh, decorations uh, for years mm -hmm. outside. You know, um, somebody, my, my sister and my mother even gave me uh, a nativity-type uh, Graceland scene, and it's the same... Um, it's the same decorations he always had. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think he would change them somewhat inside, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But so anyway, this was 1973. Linda called me up and said, you know, how would you like to spend Christmas at Graceland? And you said and no. Of course, of course I said no. <laughs> well, why would I? Mm -hmm. I, you know, who, you think I'm crazy? Why would I want to go go there? <laughs> so uh, I flew there with bells on, believe me. And um, so, but you know, one of the cute stories. Uh, was when, uh, I'll tell you this, was when he was putting Lisa to bed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, you know, come on, come on upstairs. I, was, I had been taking care of Lisa during the day and all that. And he said, come on, Jeannie, come on upstairs. And so it was uh, Linda, Lisa, and uh, me and Elvis. And so he started to, to sing her a little lullaby. And oh, he didn't even ask me what the lullaby was. I have no idea. Uh, what a moment that must have been. 
can you imagine that scene? I mean, just picture it, Joe. Yeah. Here is, here is Elvis, you know, with, I mean, I, I told this, I always say this to Jim Cox. He always says, you must have just, like, said, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You know, I am here. It's like a Norman Rockwell painting, you know. And he's, he's singing to his little girl, five years old. Wow. And, of course, I got to, to have uh, Lisa Marie pose on her bed. That was a Christmas gift, that, that hamburger-type cot, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what a bed. I mean, that was, I got to sleep in it myself when I was sick. <laughs> when Lisa wasn't there, that was a good one. Yeah, hold on one second, Jeannie. Okay.